Okay, I play the role of Miracle Adesui. Miracle, what, what, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, people. This is Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. Guess what? We have a very special guest in the house today, and we're still talking about that seasonal movie, The Games. And of course, you remember the young lady that played the role of Miracle, and that is Sharon Tops or Lukoju. Many of our viewers have been asking, bring Sharon on, bring her on, bring her on. And I want to tell you, that Sharon Tops is here today. And so we want to hear, like people say, from the horse's mouth. I'm talking about the character, Miracle. You remember that young lady that was severely, severely, terribly assaulted by one horrible Dr. Jacobs. How did it happen? Sharon Tops, let's hear from you. It's Beyond Entertainment Show with PBO. Let's go there now. Modern entertainment Beyond the applause of men We seek for something valuable And that is the soul of man yeah. And that is the soul of man Man and women so that forget And this is beyond entertainment And this is beyond entertainment Beyond entertainment Beyond entertainment Stay glue, stay tuned With PVO You went and got yourself pregnant. Ha! Huh? This girl. For God's sake, mommy, I'm not pregnant. What about this one now? No, ha! Huh? I've been observing you lately. What's going on here? Your daughter here is pregnant and she's not admitting it. Daddy, I'm not pregnant. Mom, what about this embarrassment for now? Oh! She's been eating too much lately. Or all of a sudden she's upset with salt. And now, for the past one month, Miracle hasn't complained about cramps. Can I see you for a moment? Daddy, I don't understand why mommy is doing all of this. This is emotional terrorism now. Okay, my name is Sharon Tops Ulukoju. I am a child of God. I'm a drama minister. I'm an artist and I'm also a law student at the University of Ibadan. Okay, so I played the role of Miracle Wuraola Adesui in Games, the movie, the series. Okay, um, I like to think that Nike and Miracle have like some things in common, being that both of them are sports, both of them are the um, child from the rich home who has been given everything and you know so they have that in common and the fact that they've also experienced hurt in one form even though Nikkei's own wasn't as grave as one miracle faced but they both experienced like pain and hurt in one category in one way or the other okay so basically I was sort of I, I was in the know of the entire script because, I mean, Daddy was the one that created the idea of the whole movie. I remember one time in the car, he just told me, okay, I have this concept of a movie. This is what's going to happen. He told me the introductory part, this is what's going to happen. And I was like, oh, wow, nice, amazing. That was like last year, like early, la like maybe mid last year. And I'm like, that's amazing. And so all of that, we started the whole, um, you know, developing the idea, then he contacted Goodness, and then Goodness came down to Ibadan, he wrote the script, and while he was writing the script, I, like, I was being carried along all through, so I knew what was going on even during the, you know, screenwriting period, 
So I remember we, because we talked a lot about the script together, myself, goodness, and daddy. So I remember reading the script and I'm like, when I was reading it, I was like, wow, this miracle girl has been through so much. I kept feeling so bad for her. After each episode, you think that, oh, she has gotten to the highest thing that can ever happen to somebody in this life and then get to the next episode and you just see that, oh, something else, like, she finds out that her parents are not really her parents. It was just a lot. She has just been through a lot. And so while reading the script from the initial stage, that was at the, at the initial stage, I was just really feeling so bad for her. And I'm like, Omo, whoever is going to play this miracle is, gonna, is going to have to do a lot of work because there's a lot of emotions. There's a lot of, just a lot. So I was just, we were very particular about who was going to play that part. At the time, it wasn't... Like, I was not an option to play the role. I don't know why. I didn't even cross my mind that, oh, you can even play. When, I, when it crossed my mind, I'm like, I can't do it. So we had like a couple of options to play the role. And then we settled on someone who is my friend from church. So we settled. Daddy said that he wanted her to play the role. And we were going with that. Then, fast forward to January. Fast forward to January this year. Daddy just told me one day that, you know what? this girl is not going to be able to play the role because she has exams at this period. We had already set dates for location. We had started making preparations and all of that, getting props and all of that. Daddy just told me one day that she's not going to be able to play the role because she has exams. And I'm like, what? Weeks to location, what's going to happen? Who's going to play the role? Who's going to play Miracle? And so that's how we, it was just weeks. That was January and we started, and we did the location in February. And daddy was like, Shari, I'm going to take the role. I'm like, huh? <laughs> I said, <"Sa> <laughs> what? What? <sighs> because it was literally like we didn't have much of a choice because it was just weeks to the location. We can't just, and I had read the script. I already knew everything. Like I knew I had a basic idea of what was in the script and everything. So it was like that, um, Sharon, I'm going to take this role. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot say I'm not doing that. It's our work. And it was just, I was so scared because I know, I know, I remember reading, when I was reading this, I know that I kept saying, this person is going to act this miracle. Ah, God's going to have to grant that person grace. And I'm like, am I going to be able to do it? Am I going to be able to portray the emotions? Am I going to be able to portray that character of miracle, a person that has been by everybody ev literally everybody in her life and like she she just faced a lot and i'm like am i going to be able to do it god i remember calling or texting a couple of friends of mine and saying this is it all they've given me role like and this, this is like my first major role i played nika in abattoir that was like an experience for me and then i had gone for another location early january so i'd had like experience from abattoir experience from the bond but this was like the first major like the main cast i knew i couldn't do it on my own i knew it that i couldn't and i wasn't even ready it was just sudden it was just and so i spoke to a couple of people and they just encouraged me and told me that i can do it told me what to do and like so i just went to pray i just really went to pray and just told god that god do you know what i cannot do this thing by myself i can't i literally can't so i prayed i remember praying i also met a couple of people to pray for me and with me and then i studied the script too well i remember speaking to goodness because he was the one that wrote the script and we were together when we were saying okay who is going to play me who's going to play this part and all of that together and so i just told him that i'm the one that is taking the role now the person that was supposed to take the role is not going to be able to do it and then he just told me okay you know what just do he just encouraged me and just said okay you know what be, um, read your scripts like make sure you just devote time to your script every day at least like one hour in a day and he just told me a lot Yeah, so I read the script a lot. Like I, I read the script. I meditated on it. I remember times I would just carry my script because I had the hard copy. I just carry the script, sit in front of my mirror, and just because Miracle was someone is someone that has gone through trauma, 
right from when she was a kid. Imagine someone being abused. So I just, I just, someone being abused over and over and over again for years. And your abuser is someone that you see every day. So she, she actually, she's someone that has gone through a lot. So I just tried to, you know, apart from prayers, I really did pray. I, spent, I remember spending time praying for God to just help me because I know that there's, there's so much your skill can do. If the, when the Spirit of God is upon a man, you know, it makes everything different. So I prayed, I really prayed. And then also I, I studied my script a lot. I would sit in front of the mirror and try to get those emotions. There were several times that she cried. There's that time when Japheth should be hearing voices. If you are there, I just have one question. Why do you hate me so much? Why did you kill? 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 I did not. I did not. But you did. But you did. I swear I did not. But you did. But you did. It was that evil soul, Dr. Jacob. You are a murderer, a murderer, a murderer, a murderer. Miracle, miracle. Are you fine? Are you okay? Since when did that bother you? You scream so loud from your sleep. Yes. So, how come you heard? It was so loud. I've been screaming really loud for all these years, and yet you never really heard me. What am I saying? Like, how does some? Because I've never felt. I've never. I don't think I've. I've ever had to feel that way before. How does someone feel when you lose? someone that is very close to you how do you feel when your abuser is the one that kills like the anger the hurt everything so i just sat down in front of i kept sitting in front of my mirror trying to get all those emotions and it was i think that was really how i was able to come into character by just praying and studying the script and then on location like when we at, when we were at the location it was not difficult because the director was that's that he wasn't i was even also scared to that ah, this one the daddy is the director how is it going to be? because i've never daddy has never directed me before so i was like ah. i was just like okay we'll be fine but he didn't tell he wasn't like putting too much pressure on me he allowed me to do what i wanted to do and if at all there's anything to correct he would tell me okay do this way or maybe on kukunde that's the dop he would tell me okay do this this way and all of that it was quite a very very I'll say it was an amazing experience. It was very challenging. It was very challenging. It stretched me a lot, a lot. Well, I would say that I, I think I just, I left Abattoir at Abattoir and Games. Games is a, it, an entirely different project. So, and that the old Jerry is not that person in Abattoir. So I was just taking him as, okay, daddy, old Jerry. I was listening with him on that level. I didn't, I wasn't thinking thoughts of, oh, this person that killed. I was, I was, Nikki has gone, Nikki has gone died <laughs> So, <laughs> this is another person and I needed to just internalize the fact, that, okay, this person is playing my father. He's not that man in Abattoir. He's Mr. Adesui, my father, right? So, I think I just left Abattoir at Abattoir. I wasn't, I didn't mix both of them. So, I didn't have any reason to be feeling uh, or maybe hate or anything towards daddy. Daddy, Ojari is a father and he was very, you know. And working with him before, like working, in, working with him before, like before this time, also made it, I think made it very easy for me because I had, you know, related with him and it was just very easy and the flow was quite smooth. 
to the glory of God. And this is beyond today. So the thing is, once I knew I was playing the role of Miracle, I asked immediately, I think the first question I asked was, who is playing Japheth? Because that's the person I had to interact with the most. And I just knew that I had to. I, knew, I didn't know the person personally. I knew the person, I mean, the, the person I was supposed to play Japheth is a church member. So I knew him from afar. I didn't know him personally. I'm like, I need to meet this guy. We need to interact. And at least let's have a flow, a sort of, you know, they call it chemistry now, just a flow. So that when we get on set, it won't be too plastic. I will already be relating with you as someone I know. You get so that was the first thing I I um I wanted to know. So I knew when Daddy told me, okay, this person is playing Jaffet. I already put a face. So I saw his picture. I'm like, okay, I already put the face to Jaffet. Okay, this is Jaffet. So I didn't get to see him till um it was time for location. And so when the location. When the day of arrival, and he came, and th that night, I remember I, w I went to Galu. I said, Please, where is Jaffet? Has Jaffet come? Let me meet Jaffet. So let's meet, let's talk, because we have work to do. And so we met, we interacted. So I already had in my head, okay, this is Jaffet. Like, it was already in my head. I found myself, like, calling him Jaffet, like, even outside sets, even offset. I found myself calling him Jaffet. And so when it was time to shoot, and Things didn't work out as planned and it wasn't just going and they said they had to change the character. I was like, ah. It was difficult for me because I, re I already had that picture that this guy is Jaffet. I was already calling him Jaffet, even outside set. So they said, okay, who's, who's going to take the role? And they said, my wife was going to take the role. I was like, okay, that's cool because my wife and I already have like a sort of friendship. Like we're already friends before. And Coupled with the fact that we have played a role, we, have, we had acted together earlier in January on the set of The Bond. And the role, the role both of us acted was something a bit similar to, <laughs> to Miracle and Jefferson. I'm sure when people see The Bond, they'll be like, ah, ah these two people again, what's wrong, what's going on? But so yeah, I think that was what made it really easy for me because ah, ah, on The Bond set, we had already interacted, we had gotten to be very friendly with each other. So it was just very, very easy playing almost a very similar kind of um you know so it was quite easy and my wife someone i already know he's very easy to he's easy to talk to he's easy to vibe with he's just he's just not hard he's just not a very complicated person and so it was quite easy remember times where i would even be tired Maybe they have shot a particular scene over and over again. Maybe they shot it to they shot they shot that scene today and the, tomorrow they're saying, oh, something went wrong with maybe sound. We have to do it again. I'm like, <laughs> what's going on? And then he just tell me, calm down, calm down, calm down. Because I I we were helping each other basically. If I'm hundred and maybe he's like not hundred, I'll help him. My just my countenance will just drop off on him. And same for me too. So it was just very easy to work with him. And yeah, so I don't think there was no issue. Um, there was no issue switching as such. It was just, just took, it, took me a while to get that other Jaffet out of my head and just say, okay, this is Jaffet now. This is the person you're acting with now and all of that. So, okay, you mentioned the part about where my wife said he, Jaffet died. <laughs> and I was supposed to, Jaffet, Jaffet, and all of that. I remember my, my, before we shot that scene, he told me that please don't touch my body. That he, he told me he's very ticklish. So I should, and I'm like, how will I not touch your body? Like, what's going on? <laughs> so he said, I shouldn't touch his, this side, his torso, or what is it called? I shouldn't touch that side. I should just, every other thing apart. Because if I touch that place, he will laugh. And I'm like, how can a dead man? <laughs> because I have to be quite conscious of that. But that part was, was quite, was just hilarious because I was trying not to touch. In the, in the frenzy of, oh my God, Jaffet is dead. I was also trying not to touch the dead man. Before dead man, I just start laughing. <laughs> it's time for him. <laughs> and this is beyond and today, it was, it was, I was nervous at the beginning, right? Because like I said earlier, I had never, let's say I had never directly worked with daddy as per on set, so. But Toby had already been telling me that all the smiling that we are smiling before we start location, I will change it for you. Me, I will change it for you when we get to set. So I was already comporting myself and, you know, and so, but it was actually quite cool. 
it wasn't like I expected. I thought maybe ah, I'll be under a lot of tension because I just thought I would be under a lot of tension. You know, that I have to I have to perform as I don't know. I just really thought it was going to be weird. So yeah, um, it was it wasn't it wasn't as it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I didn't think it was going to be bad, but I just, I was just nervous. Like, hey, God, I hope I don't do something. They'll not say, ah, because she's I'm a director. That's why she. I just did not want any wahala. So, I tried to. I did my best as I could, and Daddy too did not give me. He didn't give me stress. It was. I, I didn't think. I didn't think it was going to be that easy. I mean, but it was. It was quite smooth. He didn't shout on me. He did not. You know. It didn't give me too much wahala, well, it didn't give me tension. It was it was it wasn't bad at all. So to the director, I'd like to say thank you for um for just really trusting me to put in my very best to and just giving me room to express myself basically. Giving me room, you were not too strict, you were not too you were just treating me like you would treat every other person actually. And thank you so much for giving me allowance to be myself. You were not on my neck. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate you. Superior. <laughs> thank you, Daddy, for, for, first of all, even believing in me to take this role in the first place. Yeah, it meant, it meant and it still means a lot to me that you could entrust me with, because I know how precious games is to you, and you could say, okay, even though I've not really seen Sharon act, act, act as such, but I believe in God in your life. And thank you for <laughs> believing in God. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to, you know, express myself and be who God will have me be and just really be a blessing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you. And this is beyond entertainment. So, let me confess. 80% of the costumes maybe 70 percent of what i wore during games was not mine the clothes the wigs in fact okay it was only one of the wigs <laughs> it was only one of the wigs that was mine when they said okay sharon you're acting games and now it's gonna say okay what is involved clothes a season movie ha america is gonna show in several places and she's supposed to be the child of a rich person. She can't be repeating clothes as such. And the clothes I have, they're not all that plenty. <laughs> so I called my friend. I said, oh, well, babe, Alpha, I need clothes and stuff. So I went to, I went to her room together. Omi, shout out to you, baby. <laughs> so we went to her room together. We got her clothes. We got wigs. She gave me, like, all, like, more than half of the weeks I wore were hers. She gave me clothes. And also Sister Lade too. I went to Sister Lade's house. I took clothes from her, shoes. And then the rest of the other things that were mine were Frankie's maid. Yes, mommy to showed up for me. I told her, mommy, see, I'm telling you to sew clothes for me. You will not sew. Now I need it. You have to sew it now. <laughs> so she had to brush and sew a couple of clothes for me that I wore. Yes, yeah, so. That's how I came about the costumes. Half of, like more than half, were not mine. So if, just in case you see somebody else wearing the clothes that he saw me wearing, don't think that the person borrowed it from me. Thanks. <laughs> uh, I think that the scenes with Dr. Jacobs weirdly were like some of my easiest, actually. And also with Japheth. Why? Because thinking about everything you know just internalizing that person of miracle and the amount of hate she would have towards dr jacobs and also the person that played dr jacobs also made it quite easy for me because anytime i see him and i just enter the character miracle and he too was just in that character and i'm like how can the person be so wicked so it was just it was quite it was easy for me and times where um, you see him scream at her you see him do he played that role very well so my reaction was mostly natural my reaction was mostly natural and so they were quite easy for me that part well, after Jaffet died and she had to come to tell him that he killed my friend <laughs> My 
my sweet angel. So good to see you. Would you like to come in? A friend of mine just passed away. Oh, my sincere condolences, my dear. This friend of mine was found with a pencil written in you know. And the emotions and everything, they were quite easy because he too was in that character. He was in that character. So me just responding back was very easy. And also with Jaffet too, because of the fact that my one and I already flew. We already knew each other before, so we already flew and it was very, very easy. It was just basically, there were scenes with Jaffet that we didn't have to do two takes. We just did one thing. I'm like, ah, is that everything? The people will say, that's all, that's all. That you guys did well. And like, we just need to take one shot. And it was, it was that easy. We were just flowing. So I think that the scene that was hard was where the scenes where I had to scream. For example, the abortion scenes. I had to scream on him because they would tell me, is that, your, is, that, is that the best you can do? <laughs> scream like someone that is in pain. And I'm like, okay. But everywhere is quiet. <laughs> I cannot <just> be screaming. <laughs> so it was just, it was quite a challenge getting to that point of screaming. And then also the part where she was hallucinating and then Jaffet was speaking to her and then she had to scream. I think those ones were just, well, it wasn't so difficult as well. But just getting to that point of letting it all out. And this is beyond entertainment. I mean to thank God that the Sharon you see today is here. There were two hazards in for me in and I, well, not only hazards, testimonies actually, because they turned out to be testimonies during the location. Number one was i'm sure most of most people don't know it was only people in the location that knew and my one was the first one was the part where the part where miracle had to the part where not, not that one the first one the first one was the part where she had to punch dr jacobs versace was on that set she had to punch dr jacobs where um she found out that jaffet died and she went to his house and she had to punch him so we're still doing dress we as a lawyer now let's be as before camera starts rolling so trying to punch him, I think he reflex, he just blocked me. And so my hand hit, I don't know where my hand hit, but my hand shot hit his bone, my wrist, and oh God almighty. <laughs> I started screaming, I'm like, Jesus, oh, Dr. Jacob, I want to break my hand, oh. It was very painful at that point, but it wasn't so painful at that point. We still went on with the location, but when I got home that day, my brothers and sisters. <sighs> Let's just thank God for life because my hand swole up, my hand, my wrist was swollen. I couldn't sleep that night. I was crying overnight because I couldn't sleep. I couldn't lift my hand. The next morning I had to put a bandage on my It was very terrible. My hand swole up and it was very bad. But we thank God, Sha. He, he healed that. He healed me. I got better after taking, you know, pain relievers and all of that. Then the second one was the part where the end them I think that was episode six where she had to stab herself, where Miracle had to stab herself. That was all in her imagination when she was, you know, thinking about committing suicide and the Okay, so the camera wasn't going to show the lower part of my stomach where the knife would hit. So I was just supposed to act like the knife actually came in contact with my stomach and show the impact on my face right but i didn't know how to do that i'm like i can't act. I, I don't know for me it just had to touch me for me to you know express that stabbing you know whatever effect so they said okay you know what let's put a book over her stomach so she would just stab i think they used one of the scripts so just stab the script and i wasn't even supposed to stab it i was just supposed to it was just supposed to be a shoe just in case I'm acting and then the knife comes in contact with my stomach. So that's how they say camera rolling, action. And your blessed sister miracle. 
decided that she want to stop herself. <laughs> so I, I did it with so much force that it was just really God that saved me, honestly. Because I did it with so much force that the knife, there was a book there, remember? So the knife, the knife hit just the edge, like just the edge of the book. It tore the edges of the book, like to show you how much force I used. And so, and then the clothes I was wearing was also very thick. So, thankfully, there was no blood shed because I don't even know. And funny enough, I didn't realize that oh, this thing could have actually hit me. It was after they did um, cut, and Daddy was like, Sharon, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to stab yourself? What happened? And so everybody was just, apparently everybody was just holding their breath and was just like, and I'm like, what happened? I'm sorry, I did not know. And all of that. So I just thank God that, you know, the book was there and the coat I was wearing was also thick because it would have just been a disaster. And God forbid such. And I think one thing that helped too was I, I prayed before that scene. Yeah, I prayed. And also Daddy too, I think Daddy mentioned that just while we were shooting that scene, he just had the leading to just praying under his breath, you know, in tongues. And only God knows what would have happened, actually. Anything could have happened. But we bless God. That is a testimony today. Okay, so that scene was actually one of the things I actually enjoyed because it was just... Ah, ah. Sister Miracle claiming her property. Anyway, so, um, um, she, that, what happened in that part, that part was... Um, that was shortly after she and Japheth had just met and you know started talking and she started following him to fellowship and um, another lady who happens to also be a member of the fellowship came to say okay ah, but Japheth you said you would visit me and all of that and Miracle noticed that Omo, if I don't possess my possession they're gonna possess it for me so I have to be a war. <laughs> she is a fresher. Oh, nice to meet you, sister. God bless you. I think let me see IBK. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. <sighs> Alright now. You can see later. We'll see you later. Hey, oh, oh, Roger. Oh, oh. I'm still expecting the visit you promised to. You know it's long overdue. Ah. <laughs> We are running late for our appointment. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Sister, we'll see you later. So, what appointment do we have? So, you think I'm going to sit back and watch all those fellowship sisters with their stupid scarves come and snatch my, my friend? <laughs> well, she Jeez. was just being friendly now. <laughs> see, trust me. As a lady, I know game long before you do. That that thing. Her name is Sarah. Whatever. She was rich and I won't have it. <laughs> oh yeah, woman of war. <laughs> you didn't tell me that we are now marking territories. <laughs> See, whatever you call it. <laughs> See, you need to be coming down. You actually need to be coming down. She started, you know, saying, Cooking up stories like, oh, we have an appointment, like just trying to get Jafet out of that scene because she didn't want anybody to take her man. Man, that her own man, oh, but it's, she's not his own man. So, my message to you young ladies out there is please, for God's sake, define relationships, right? Define relationships for both, not just young ladies, guys and girls. Don't go and carry, don't, don't put a title on what has no title. Don't call someone who has not said with his mouth that, okay, well, you, I want to marry you, or I want to love you, or I want to be in a relationship with you. And then you just Im imply things because, okay, this guy has been nice because he has been calling you. You now start saying, oh, he's my man. Start doing all of... Because it was after that that she started saying my things like, I cannot allow them to snatch my, she almost said my man. And then after that, she started saying things like, oh, um, it's pride that makes African men think that their women cannot take. She just started, ah. and the guy too was enjoying the attention, enjoying everything. And he too, he didn't, you know, clarify things. He didn't clear her. So basically, my point is, for young ladies and guys, right, you would meet, you would meet different guys, you would meet different people. 
right? You would get close to different people. But one thing I always like to do in my own personal life is I like to define relationship. When I see that I'm getting too close to this person, I'm like, but oh, wow, what are we doing? <laughs> What's going on here? Let's know. Let's be on the same page before before accidents will go and call and even we'll start crying tears of a quick baby later in life. All those things are not necessary. So define relationship. It's not it's not hard actually. How, if the guy is not upfront about it, he's calling you, he's texting you, he's calling you nicknames, he's doing all of those things that you don't understand. Call him and say, brother, how far? What's going on? It's for your own and peace of mind and your sanity, so you know what you're doing in your life. I like to be very straightforward in life. So yeah, do that please. It's gonna help, it's gonna save you from so much stress. And brothers too. If a lady too is calling you things that you don't want to be called, tell her that sis of God, we are still brethren in the Lord and this is how we want it to be. And don't don't also be doing things that will make don't don't you you know, brothers, you know, you know when you're leading a sister on. And if you don't know, no. Have sense, please. Thanks and God bless. <laughs> and this is beyond today. I don't know. I don't know how to speak as if I was not in that story because I've actually been so consumed with the story. As a miracle, obviously, Japheth was like the only person that literally showed me attention, showed her, you know, love as she knew it, as she thought she knew it to be. And so it was just very devastating for her. So as a miracle, I definitely would not have wanted Japheth to die. And it was just heartbreaking for her. Like for me, just looking at her story, like the only good thing Apparently, like, seemingly good thing that had happened to her in her life, this Dr. Jacobs now has to come and take it away. So I really, as a miracle, I wish Jeffers would not have died. But at the same time, his death also, you know, I'm not saying that his death was good before people would come and drag me. <laughs> but it was true that, you know, while grieving and everything, that, you know, she found Christ later on. So, uh, I don't know, his death really affected miracle affected her a lot you know emotionally someone that was already messed up emotionally some have the best the best thing that happened to her now you know died can i can just imagine so japanese that was pathetic it was actually quite pathetic and it paints me as miracle so sisters like i said earlier in the interview define relationships because this is the accident I was talking about. This was this is the accident I was referring to. If you don't define relationships, these are things that will occur. You can't be telling somebody's son that you love them. And they will not tell you, God bless you. That will happen. Did God not bless me before? Pray for me, okay? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Love you. Bless you, sister. Anyway, my point is, it was, it was, ah, that's when I just read that and I'm like, what? I was laughing. I was laughing when I read that, you know, when I was reading the script, I'm like, oh, more. Jaffet too. Anyway, he had a comment, Shah, he's dead. He had a comment because he was not a very serious person in life. R.I.P. Jaffet. <laughs> I give a shout out. So, first of all, my PA, a boobs. <laughs> I think I'm going to watch this. Shout out to you. God, she was around. She was my PA from even before location started. And right from you know, day one, she was always there. You know, when it's time for me to change, okay, Sean, what do you need? What do you need? She was carrying my bag everywhere, carrying the PA job on her head like we should cap. She was carrying my mat on her head. If it's time for food, she will, you know. She was just a very good, you know, assistant. She was just there and just made life easier for me, basically. And also, Omi, um, Omi too was there. She also helped me. Thank you so much, babes. Omi, um, Ebube, Favor too was there, you know, helping around in the house and just making things generally easier. Thank you so much, um, 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 um. Yeah, those were the people that were like around, around. And then also my friends from, like, you know, that were just, not maybe not on set on set but we're just encouraging me from afar thank you so much um triumph thank you casey thank you everybody thank you for the encouragement thank you for the love thank you for believing in me i never knew i could make it thus far but thank god for alpha has brought us 
thing. <laughs> Frank is for my outfits, the beautiful outfits that she sold for me. Thank you. And for supporting me and believing in me and giving me food and making sure that it will be carry biscuits for me when I go your set and water. Okay, so to um miracles out there, right? Um I don't know. I feel like there are a lot of people, like even more than beyond the fact that um games was a very you know interesting movie the storyline was very gripping and all of that but i really feel that the message the message is for a couple of people out there there may not be many maybe you watching this and if you i don't know i always say this thing that is it's easy for people to you know people that have not been hurt people that have not experienced you know betrayal to be able to say forgive like God say you should forgive, forgive. Like it's very easy to say it when you're not in that show. But how do you tell someone that has been, you know, raped, that has been, that has aborted several times for someone who is supposed to be her guardian? How do you tell someone that has been abandoned by her family? Basically, like someone in the shoes of me, how do you tell someone like that to f just forgive? Like it's a difficult thing to do. It's a difficult thing to even learn how to love people properly. Her mind has, she has, her mind is, a lot of damage has gone on with her. And so acting that role just really made me be able to relate more with and identify more with people that have been hurt and, you know, betrayed in whatever capacity, especially in the area of um, sexual abuse, especially in the area of sexual abuse or, you know, maybe um, emotional abuse by your parents <clears throat> or you have been taken for granted because of whatever reason I want you to know that just like miracle right I feel like this is the reason why Christ died he didn't die for people he died for people that are lost right because she was so lost she kept saying that God are you there anyway? Like, how can you see all these things happening to me? And like, it's okay. So, I I want you to know that it's because of you that Jesus Christ came to die. <clears throat> it's because of you, like you in particular, that He came to die, and He intends to give you, you know, healing. He intends to make you whole. He intends to make you whole. He intends to help you to forgive those that have hurt you, to forgive and to really just let go of that pain and hurt. And like, I think that this is, like I said earlier in the interview, this is one thing I feel like Nikkei and Miracle had in common. They had both been hurt. So I'm identifying again with this character, someone that has been in that place of, like, betrayed by people that you trusted, right? So yeah, Christ has come to give you healing. And if you would just open your heart to him, He's willing to make you whole. Like you, obviously, you probably do not have any idea how to move on from where you are in a state of brokenness and everything. But that's why Christ came. He came to show you how. He came to show you how to love again. He came to show you how to be whole again. He came to give you healing, and you just open up your heart and just embrace that. I'm sure that God, God would fill you up with His love because He says it in the Scripture that His love is shed abroad in our hearts. And just open up your heart to him, really, really, he's there. That's my message to you, Miracle. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of this project. Thank you for watching games. Thank you for, you know, identifying with the characters. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for everything. Really appreciate you guys so much. So, keep watching Beyond Entertainment Show with BBO. Subscribe to our channel, Lejo. Subscribe. <laughs> like, if you have watched it before, watch it again. Watch everything. Share to your friends. Like, share, subscribe. God will bless you. Bye. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Am I sounding like Sirene already? Thank God for Sharon Thompson. Look at you. May the Lord continue to bless you. What we see about you today the great acting in games will be the least ever. We pray that the Lord will continue to bless you and to increase you. I shouldn't forget to say.
God bless your daddy. And your mama too. Yeah, like I we always say here, please let's keep praying for drama ministers. These guys are doing a fantastic job, you know. Like she was saying, I was scared when she lifted that. I was like, huh? <laughs> but we thank God, you know, God keeps saving us. God keeps protecting us, you know. Uh, we go to locations sometimes inside bush and everywhere, but the Bible says he will give his angel you know, um, charge over us so that we won't dash our feet against the stone. And it's doing that literally, I tell you. Maybe one of these days I'll be sharing great testimonies. The stories behind the movies. And that's what Beyond Entertainment Show is all about. Thank you very much. Before I go, I want to say, please, we are going on a location very soon. Keep praying for us. So, uh, well, many of our viewers have been saying, when are you going to release season two? Ah, we're season two. We're season two, season two, season two, season two. Let me tell you something. By the special grace of God, we're working on the script. Season two is coming, but I want to play it with you. You know, it's not like you just go inside one room and then finish season two and then come out. It takes weeks. It takes months of planning, of strategizing, of looking for location, of trusting God for resources. We spend a lot to bring these movies out. Pray for us. If God is leading you, we don't mind. Support us. Please. We wouldn't mind at all if you send us money to shoot. And that is if God is putting that in your heart. We will appreciate you. Of course, you can use uh the details on your screen right now thank you very much keep watching beyond entertainment show with pvo and the lord bless you until i come your way again with another guest next week by the special grace of god i'm out of here peace modern entertainment beyond the applause of men i'm still waiting Bye bye. That's what I mean. We'll see, see you again. Modern entertainment beyond the applause of men. We we'll seek for something valuable, and that is the soul of men. And that is the soul of man Man and we men So that for God And this is beyond entertainment And this is beyond entertainment Beyond entertainment Keep watching Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO.